We have a lot to cover today, and I like to always start my webinars on the hour. So thank you for everyone that was here promptly. So we're going to go ahead and move right along. This is being recorded, by the way. And my name is Dana Crawford. You can find my information at powersellingmom.com. And you can read about me there. I won't go into all the details, but um, I've been an eBay seller since 97. I do make a living full-time on eBay. I quit all three. I quit all three of my oh we had some background noise. Um, okay, I don't know what was up with that, but we'll carry on. Um, maybe it's my webcam. I'm gonna I'm gonna shut off my, my mug. All right, we'll see if that helps. Okay, so um, yeah, so you can find all my information online. You can like me on Facebook at Dana Crawford with the number one and on eBay as well. Well, eBay, I'm Dana, D-A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. And I'm a consignment seller, so people bring me stuff from all over the place. I get people that uh, bring stuff in, and it works out really well. Let's, let's see, I'm picking up some background. Um, let me see if I have everybody's mic shut off. Gosh, this is the first time this has happened, but let's see. Um, we're picking up background somehow. First time this has ever happened. All right, let's see if that does it. All right, sorry about that. I think, all right, we have everybody on mute. I don't know what took place there, but it looks like we're um, back in action. So if we had any... Um, background information. Okay, we're good. Okay, so moving right along oh, after our technical difficulty. Um, those of you that just roamed in, I am actually taking questions at the end. So feel free to type a question in if you have one as we're going along and then I will um, address it at the end. Or don't forget to remove it if it gets answered because chances are your question will be answered. Okay, so um, it looks like we have a little bit of a delay on the audience on your um, view. So let's see what's up with that. Why isn't that coming through? Okay, there we go. So a quick side note. Um, thanks, special thanks to Constant Contact. They actually are uh, the sponsor of this webinar. So I really appreciate them for um, giving me the opportunity to present my eBay workshop. If you want more information or you would like a free trial with Constant Contact, they are giving out a free 60-day trial, no credit card needed. Just go to powersellingmom.constantcontact.com to get more information. Now moving right along to the legal stuff, uh, my, my please do not take screenshots or photos or record this without my permission. And also don't sell this on eBay. <laughs> so appreciate that. Now for those of you that um, may not have an eBay or PayPal account, I do not go into step-by-step how to join eBay or PayPal because it's seriously so darn easy. You don't need me to um, walk you through step-by-step step how to set up an eBay account. You just go to ebay.com and register and follow the prompts and get it set up. And then you go to paypal.com and again register and get your account set up. 
easy as pie. So our agenda, we're going to talk about researching items. We're going to talk about different listing styles. We're, going to, we're here to learn about the fast track to listing on eBay, and that's what the main, main topic is. And then I am going to cover a little bit about eBay shopping. And I'm going to give you some tips, and then again, we'll have Q&A at the end. So feel free to type any questions in as we go along. However, they will not be answered until the end. And then after, um, if your question does get answered, please remove it from the queue so I don't have to read through everything that we already talked about. All right, so the most important part of being successful on eBay is research. I generally tell people, if you don't learn anything at all from me today, this is the absolute most important part of being successful on eBay. As I am a consultant, I'll get people come to me and say, oh, eBay sucks, I can't make any money, nothing's selling. Well, the fact remains that they're actually listing items on eBay that nobody wants. So it's not like back in the day I could put a Beanie Baby on and put a $1,000 price tag on it and expect it to sell because the current market value is not $1,000 for a Beanie Baby. <laughs> so it's not like that anymore. So we have to pay attention to the current market value. I'm also a consignment seller. People come to me all the time with their stuff that they feel is worth millions. This must be worth millions because I read about it in a collector book. The collector book says Elvis is worth $1,000 on this uh, record LP collector book. However, the current market value on eBay may only be $20. It could be um, they saw it on, a, on the road show, the antique road show, or some road show, some antique show. They saw, oh, gosh, they've projected this to sell for this amount of money so it must be worth that much or an appraiser came along and said oh this is worth you know thirty five thousand dollars this jewelry but yet the appraiser is appraising that high for insurance reasons so it could be the actual market value current market value could only be a third of what that reads and then also some people say well I saw it on Google so Google is always right, right? <laughs> so it must be worth millions. So it's, the bottom line is we need to go by what the current market value is on our listing or on our current items. So we're going to start by going to eBay.com, and we're going to see that there's a search bar located at the top of the eBay website. And you don't have to be a member, actually, to search. And what you're going to do, you'll find this bar at the top. It's ready for you to type some words in. And you can go ahead and type a few words in, maybe of what you're shopping for. Those of you that have never sold on eBay, but you sure know how to shop on eBay, well, this is where you generally go to type in a few words of what you're searching for when you're shopping. Now, if we're researching on eBay, we're going to go to the far right, and we're going to click on the word advanced. And this is where, um, this is the screen that we want to go to. Now, just a side note, I work with a lot of uh, moms, and that's how Power Selling Mom came into play. And I actually teach my moms about how to um, sell their stuff on eBay so that they can stay at home and be stay-at-home moms as well. I've been doing that for years. And so I'll tell them to take, start with a box. And take that box and go around the house and fill it up with stuff that you don't want anymore. Then you sit down at the computer and click on completed listings, or, or excuse me, advanced. And we're going to go to advanced search. And then this is where we're going to take a look at each item that we pull out of our box. And we're going to type in a few keywords into this search area. So all we do is type in a few words, and then we're going to check box the word where it says, two words, where it says completed listings at the bottom. Now, I like to always use um, completed listings and not 
Okay, Paul said he can't see. Um, is there anybody else that can't see? Does everybody else see my screen okay? Gosh, you got me worried now. Sorry for this little delay. I want to make sure everybody can see my screen. Okay, everybody else can see it. Okay, had me worried there. Okay, Paul. <laughs> All right, Paul, you need to um, try checking your settings. All right, so here we go. Everybody can see in here. So we're going to pull the first item out of the box, and we're going to type in a few keywords, and we're going to check mark down at the bottom, completed listings, and then we're going to click on search. And this is the beginning of going through that box to look up all of our items. Now, say we have a Starbucks coffee mug, and this is everybody's homework. I want you to go to advanced search and type in these three words, Starbucks coffee mug. And this is what I'd like you to do when, when this webinar is over. And then after you type those in, checkbox completed listings. And the reason we do not want to look at sold, we want to look at completed, because we learn more when we look at completed. When you look at sold, you're only looking at sale, the sale of items. But if you look at completed, we're looking at both sold and unsold. And this is how we could become better educated on what's valuable, what's not valuable. We want to also learn from the unsold items, because we don't want to be like them. So we need to take a look at what they did so that we make sure that we don't do that as well. So then we click on search after we have these words in. And then what happens is the eBay system will bring up all of the listings with uh, titles that have Starbucks coffee mug in the title. And then we'll notice there's 42,684 listings from this search. Now, that's a lot, right? We could be here all day long, so we're not going to really want to sit here all day long and look through these 42,000 listings. So we're going to readjust the sort. So we're going to change the sort. It's a drop down, and we're going to adjust it to highest price first. My motto is show me the money. Let's take a look at the highest price selling items first. Now, Side note, if I was shopping on eBay, which I obviously was was doing before I saw this sort bar, because I when I when I shop on eBay, I adjust it to the lowest price first. But when I'm um, doing my research on eBay, I want to look at the highest price items under completed listings. And what happens is the system will reorganize those 42,684 listings and bring the highest priced ones to the top. So we're going to see the first Starbucks mug sold for $611. And it had 32 bids. Let's see if I can use this. Uh, OK, here we go. It sold for $611. And it had 32 bids. Now the next one sold for $610 and it had 31 bids. So that's pretty good. So if I had one of those mugs, I would probably want to list it like they did. So I want to follow success. Now notice down at the bottom, you'll see this sell one like this. That is also the um, being seen, but we're going to come back to that later, but I just wanted to point that out to you So while we're on this page. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to research, and as we look up each item that we pull out of our box, we're going to learn from what, what they've done. So we're going to pay attention to what kind of words do they use in their title, and also was it an auction or a buy it now? What was successful for these people? We want to be like them. And see this guy down here, he had 200 reusable Starbucks mugs. He listed as a buy it now for $290, and it's in black, so it means it did not sell. So if it's in black or red, depends on what device you're using to view it, 
it means it did not sell. Now, if it's in green, of course, it's sold. So we want to be like Cleveland up here and get 299.95. So he listed his as a buy it now, and that worked out really well for him. Now, the other people, they listed theirs at auction, and they started the auction low, and they ended up for 600 and some dollars. So it could be Cleveland may have gotten more money if he would have gone that direction. But sometimes it's tough call. So did they have free shipping? That's the other thing we want to look at. Now, most of the time, you'll notice when these high-end items, when these items sell really well, they do offer free shipping. And guess what? If free shipping is the way to go, I'm definitely going to figure out a way to add that into my um, listing so that I can offer free shipping as well. I like to actually just switch around and do some free, some not free. So they all come out at the end of the day. So research recap. We're going to go to advanced search. We're going to type in a few keywords in our search bar. We're going to check box completed listings. We're going to click on the word search. We're going to adjust the sort bar so we view highest price first. And we're going to follow success. This is the basic five steps of doing your research. And as I mentioned, you cannot research enough. And the more items that you look up and the more that you research, the better you'll be at developing an eye for what to buy and sell on eBay. That was another ebook I wrote 100 years ago. OK, so moving right along. Now we're going to talk about listing an item on eBay. Now, we're going to cover the fast track, and there are three basic eBay listing styles. We have our auction, and you can start your bid as low as a penny. Now keep in mind, if you start an auction at a penny, and only one person shows up and they bid a penny, and it ends and they win it for a penny, well, guess what? You have to sell that. You have, I call that shipping with a smile. You still have to ship it. You still have to treat them just as you would with, for the item that sold for thousands or hundreds because they deserve, they deserve the same fair treatment. They want it fair and square on eBay. So pay attention. Your research is what's going to tell you whether it's worth starting it at a penny. Example, if I'm listing an American Girl doll, it's new in the box, no worries. I will start that at a penny auction because I have no fear that it's going to go through the roof. I will roll the dice. But I learned that from my research. Now, you can also have an auction with a buy it now. So buyers have the option to either bid on it or they can buy it now. That's the second type of listing. And the third type of listing is called a fixed price. So this is where you set the price, and the buyer can either purchase the item or they can make an offer. So here you have the three basic styles of listing something on eBay. Now, I threw in a reserve auction. I'm not a fan of reserves. I don't usually recommend reserves, but I usually get people ask me about it. So here we are. A reserve is where the seller sets a price and it's hidden from the public, and you do not have to sell the item if the reserve is not met. So for example, I list a chopper motorcycle, I start the auction at $9.99, but I have a reserve of $12,000, and then people come along and bid and bid and bid, and it gets the auction to go up, but then it ends at $9,000. I do not have to sell it because I have a hidden reserve amount. I'm not a fan of reserves. I, I think that reserves tend to scare people off. And also, they're pricey, because eBay does, I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to talk about fees today, but eBay does um, 
eBay does do that. Wait, got a quick text message to my aunt. Yes, you can come swim. Okay, so um, reserve auction. That's that's the reserve auction in a nutshell, but I am not a fan in a, of it. Now, your research will help you determine your listing style, if you should have an auction or fixed price. This is why research is so important. You can't do the guessing game. You have to check it out. Don't just throw it out there. And again, you have to look at completed listings, not current. Current listings do not count in my book. Current listings, they they could be, um, you know, okay, people could be asking $17,000 for that jewelry, but it hasn't been selling for that in the last year. So it's not a current market value. It's just somebody hoping they're going to get that price. So you your research is going to help you decide if you should start at high or start at low. So here's the fast track to eBay listing. It's called, the first one is called sell one like this. So what we do is we find an item, say we're doing our research, our completed listings, and we run across this Starbucks mug that we have, and I just sold one of these by the way. These are still out there. I have found these at Starbucks. They're still current. You could find one now and then. I picked one up at our local mall here in Ocala for like $5.99, and I sold it for $85 on eBay. So this style mug is still out there. This person, they had theirs um, at a set of two for $79.99. It was the right mug. So all I did was I click on sell one like this. Right while I'm still sitting in the coffee shop having my cup of coffee and looking at my mug, I can click pull it up on my eBay app, click on sell one like this, and I can take a picture of it and list it right while I'm in Starbucks. It took me two days to sell that, by the way. Okay, so when you click on sell one like this, it'll actually pull up the collect it'll pull up the correct category. It'll put it in the category for you. And then it'll also bring in the title for you. So whatever title they use, it'll bring the words in and it will um, have it ready. So the, uh, the thing I want to point out is you can adjust this title. You don't have to go by what it says. You can adjust a few words. You can change it around and make it suit how you like it. Now, I do like a title mixed up with caps and lowercase. I don't like titles that are all caps. I think it's better to, to switch it up a bit. I do like the word new at the front of my titles, but you know, you can play with the different words. And then forget subtitle. They don't they don't um show up in search and it's not necessary. Why spend the fifty cents, in my opinion? And then um you can just choose is it new or is it used? Now that would sell one like this. So here's the second fast track to listing an item on eBay. You're going to go to a current live listing. So say you've done your research and then you went to live listing and you found a Starbucks mug or whatever it is that you're going to sell and you find them live. So all you do is click on sell now and it's down at the bottom. And when you click on sell now, well, it's around the picture area, who knows, eBay may move that next week. <laughs> but just wherever you see sell now, click on it. And then again, it's going to bring in the category for you. It's going to put in the same category that they put it in. And then it's going to bring in the same title that they use. So now it's your job to adjust the title if you'd like. You don't want to change it up too much, but if they have like if they have look beautiful pretty item Chances are it didn't sell in the first place, but um, you don't need words like that in your title. My biggest tip for you on titles is your title is all about keywords. I like to tell people your title is bait on the hook. It's all about, it's not a sentence. It doesn't need to make sense. It's just keywords. So you put all your keywords in that title, and then again, skip subtitle and then click on is it new or is it used. 
same thing. Now, the third way that's easy to list an item on eBay is you're going to go to the top bar of sell. So the top bar where we search is found on every eBay page. At the very top, you'll be able to see the word sell, S-E-L-L. -L, and all you do is click on sell. And then next, eBay is going to say, what are you selling? So all you do is type in a few words of what you have for sale. So I'm going to put in Starbucks Coffee Mug Florida. Again, just a few words. doesn't need to make sense. And then eBay is going to ask us, we suggest you use this category, because now you have to put it in a category. That's the first part of selling an item, is choosing the category. So eBay is going to make suggestions to you. You can take or leave it. But of course, I want mine in the Starbucks category. Now, no matter which one of these three styles that you list on eBay, they all have the same basic information, which means we have our title. It's all about keywords. Then we have our category that chooses the category at the top. Well, our category goes first. Actually, our category, I should reword these. The category first, then the title, and then is it new or used. Then we're going to put in photos. This is part of listing an item on eBay. We're going to have the description, which I'm going to go into this in a minute. We're going to have the price of the item. We're going to have the shipping information for the item. We're going to have a return policy for the item, and that's it. This is your checklist. No matter which listing style that you use, the frat of the fast track, the, the new, um, or excuse me, the sell one like this, sell now, or sell, those three styles all have the same information. A title, a category, new or used, photo, description, price, shipping, return policy. That's it, folks. So. Continuing on, we've got our category, we've got our title, we've got it new or used. Now we're going to add the photos. So those of you on laptops or desktops, you're simply going to click on Add Photo. And when you click on Add Photo, it's going to pull up photos from your computer. And then all you do is click on the photos that you want to add. And this, I had a sleeping bag handy. so. You can just pull in all the photos right directly from your computer. You can delete them. You can also click on Edit. You can edit the photos. You can crop them, which I highly recommend cropping. If you don't crop on your smartphone or your software, you can crop on eBay. But you want your first photo to be the best one, of course. The more photos, the better. And then um, anything that's free, of course, will will take advantage of that. If there's a fee, I don't usually take advantage of that. And then that's it. So we get our photos added. Next is the description box. And this is where we describe the item. So I had a couple people working for me, and I would tell them, stare at the item and describe it. That's it. Just look at the item and describe the darn thing. And then keep it short, sweet, very easy to read. I do not want, I cannot stand it when I go to an auction or a listing on eBay and it goes on and on and on and on down the page. I think I need my attorney because there's so much information there where they're telling me, oh, I only ship on Tuesday because I have grandma on Wednesday or I have to take the kids here on Thursday. I don't care. Just describe the item to me. Don't tell me about your drama. I think that, you know, so many people don't realize how important it is to capture them. You only have a few seconds to get their attention to make them want to buy your item. So you don't need to go into all of this detail. I also suggest using left margin. And this is me. And I I prefer using all of my um, listings to the left margin. I don't center anything. 
I don't believe in having long sentence, long sentences. I use a number 18 font. I'm old now, so I like to have um, large letters so that they're easy for all types of people to read. And they are extremely, number 18 font is extremely mobile friendly. You can pull up any of my listings on any mobile device and it's super easy to read. Also, black text with white background is extremely important. I had somebody pay money for me for consulting. They spent a ton of money on an, a template for their listing. It was a total waste of money because their template was not mobile friendly. And so the guy's like, well, my sales have slowed down. I don't understand what's happened. I pull up one of his listings on my cell phone, and his description box is completely empty. There was nothing in it. So when I went to my computer, first I was like, well, hello, sir. You need to describe your item. And he was like, what? So I went to my computer, and I pulled it up. And then here, his background was black, and then his font was white. So eBay or my mobile device blocked out the background totally and it just had white font, white letters. Well, guess what? Can't read it. And also make sure that you include flaws. So if your item has any damage in it, if it has a flaw, be sure to describe the flaw because if you don't, you're going to set yourself up for a return or bad feedback or have an upset customer, which you definitely don't want. And also have a positive, something positive statement. I like to consider it like with raising children. You always want to have something positive to say after you've said something negative. So the, the glass has a, a small chip on it, but the colors are brilliant in the sunshine or something like that. But just always have something positive in there when you have a negative tone. You want your description to have a positive tone anyhow. So I have the URL. I bought the domain name right to my eBay store. You just type in ASKDANNA.com and that will take you directly to my eBay store. So just go look at a couple of my listings. I, I like to keep my sentences short so I have like maybe five or six words and then I hit enter. And then I put five or six words and hit enter. So all of my sentences are very short. And you'll see if you pull them up on a mobile device. Okay, so now that we got our title, our description, our photos, our category, is it new or used, now we're going to look for um, what kind of listing are we going to use. Is it going to be an auction or fixed price? Now we're going to know what we want because of our research. So we're going to pretty much know. Or eBay is going to make some suggestions to you. So in this example, you can see eBay says, we suggest you start it at 99 cents. Well, we can take or leave their suggestions. And then the next thing is, if you do add a buy it now, they'll say, well, do you want to add a buy it now to this auction, no matter what you started at? And then they're also going to ask you how many days do you want to list your auction. Do you want a one-day, a three-day, a five-day, a seven-day, or a ten-day auction? Now, again, your, um, your, your research is going to help you decide what, how long you want your auctions to run by following success. Now, for me, I kind of just let it go on what's convenient for me in my life at this point. So, it used to be back in the day, we used to have to have our auctions end at a certain day or time and blah, blah, blah. But now with mobile devices, if somebody wants your item, believe me, they're going to be following your item on their mobile device and they're going to be ready to pounce when, when needed. So I don't stress too much about the time of day. However, if I have a really high-end um big profile item like a ham radio or a chopper motorcycle and I want to get the absolute most exposure that I can for this item that is going to be a, a big seller, then I will generally run a 10-day auction and start it on a Thursday about 2 or 3 in the afternoon and then let it run for the 10 days so that 
I get two weekends out of it, and then um, it's early enough for pretty much all over the world. Excuse me. So it works out well. Now, the eBay fees, I'm not going into fees today, but the eBay fees have changed, and one-day auctions are going to cost you a dollar. So I, I learned that because Memorial Day weekend, I ran one-day auctions, and I sold out of most all of my gold. So I started my gold auctions at 7 in the morning, and I ran them so that they were ending about every hour up till, I don't know, 8, 9 at night. And the morning ones actually sold better than the evening ones. But that was, they all ended on Sunday and Monday. So it was all of Memorial Day weekend. I just kicked butt. It was just so much fun. Okay, so now. We're we're going to, um, oh, the next option is to schedule your listing. Now, this costs 10 cents if you decide to do it, and it's it's a great tool. I actually am going to Vegas next week, so or the week after, so I'm probably going to be scheduling my auction. What I do is I set them up. I call this a paid vacation. So, like, when we went to England and Ireland last year, I scheduled a bunch of auctions to end two days after I got home. So the, that way, I was making money. My auctions were going off and, and getting bigger and bigger and making money. And then I had a couple days to relax before I had to do my shipping. So when you do this kind of thing and do this paid vacation, you have to keep in mind that you're going to have a lot of shipping to do when you come home. So make sure that you have a few days of rest before you have to jump in. Because the year before, I didn't do that. And my goodness, I was exhausted. Okay, next you're going to choose how to ship. So here's the option. eBay is going to say, well, we suggest you use priority mail. We suggest, you know, the average one has, is weighs two pounds. And we suggest you also offer free shipping. You can take or leave all of their suggestions. And if you have to charge for shipping, I suggest you choose calculated shipping, or you can do flat shipping. It's totally up to you how you charge. Now, you're also going to notice down at the bottom, there's going to be optional for you to say yes to the global shipping program, or you're going to create your own international shipping option, or you're going to say no to international shipping. Now, in my opinion, you will cut yourself short. You're going to lose business if you do not say yes to the Global Shipping Program. So you would say yes to using the Global Shipping Program. And what that means is you're going to package your item and you're going to ship it to Kentucky, which is the eBay Fulfillment Center, and then they're going to ship it for you to either Australia or Canada or whatever country is in the Global Shipping Program. So say yes to the Global Shipping Program. It's still going to be easy for you to ship. And then for people that are brand new, you might want to say no to international shipping outside of the Global Shipping Program. Or if you you know, have camera equipment and you think that, um, you know, the Russian Federation is going to love that camera equipment, that I'm going to say yes to outside of the Global Shipping Program, but I will only offer express mail priority, priority mail express shipping. That's just me. I feel that it's the safest and I've never had anything ever lost. It is higher. Um, it does cost more money to the international buyers, but my feelings are it only brings out the serious shoppers who have money and want the item anyhow. So that's what I suggest. Otherwise, just say yes to the global shipping program and no to outside the global shipping. Now, to be successful on eBay, you're definitely going to need a shipping scale. And your bathroom scale is not a shipping scale because it lies. <laughs> now, those of you that have ever attended my workshop in Georgia, there's Karen who's, uh, who works for the Postal Service, and she has that southern um, accent. And she tells that story so well, and she'll say, your shipping scale lies. You know, people get on their scale, they hold their package, or they get off their scale, and it just doesn't work and you can get yourself in trouble 
by thinking that that's going to work because what's going to happen is you're going to get um, your customer is going to have to pay more on his end and then you're going to get bad feedback or you're just going to upset someone. So get yourself a good shipping scale. I can remember when I started on eBay, I bought a baby scale at Goodwill. <laughs> and it's fine. Just make sure you have a good scale. And then also you're going to need to measure your boxes, measure your items. You're going to have to put in your weight and your measurement. Now, we're not getting ready to ship right now. We're just letting the system know how we're going to ship. So it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. You can kind of guesstimate right here going by um, completed listings and going by what others have used. But when it gets time to ship, you want to make darn sure you are accurate when your item's in the box. I'm doing another webinar on shipping. That is not the topic today. But I do want to tell you to get a good shipping scale and to get a good measuring tape. I got, I got all excited. I found these measuring tapes from China. And I, they came in red, yellow, blue, green. And they were really cool eBay colors. And I thought, oh, I'm going to share these at my events and give them away. And I measured a coat on eBay with one of them. The lady contacts me and said, are you sure about those measurements? And generally, I would blow it off and say, oh, yeah, I measured that. It's whatever it reads. That's what it is. But in this case, I remembered I used that China measuring tape. So I went and got out my grandmother's seamstress tape, and I went and measured it, and it was way off. <laughs> so I threw all of those beautiful measuring tapes in the garbage. So make sure that you get good quality measuring tapes when you're measuring your package. And then you can choose package or thick envelope. Now again, this isn't, this isn't the exact way I'm probably going to ship, but just to get you on the fast track, choose package or thick envelope. Now if it's a giant box or if it's a, a bed and you're shipping freight, of course you're going to change it. But generally just choose package or thick envelope. And then you'll want to choose how you're going to ship it. Now, again, you don't have to ship it this way until shipping day, but you have to put something in the system. So I recommend USPS standard post two to nine business days. Chances are I'm going to ship it priority mail, and they're going to be over the moon because it's going to arrive quicker than what they expected. But... Um, this is just getting the ball rolling. I'm just sharing with you to help make your life easier to get your listing fast listed. So just choose USPS standard post, two to nine business days. Now you're also going to see offer local pickup only. Don't do it. The, the, the problem with that is people think, oh, my item's too big. I can't ship it. Do not be afraid. If I could start my life over, I would start or my eBay life over, I would start and sell furniture and car parts because they both do well. <laughs> and people are afraid to ship furniture. I am not afraid. My husband just won't let me bring furniture home anymore. But furniture, um, what I do is I choose freight shipping, and then I will put, we'll ship anywhere in the world. Buyer makes arrangement for shipping. So, do not choose local pickup only because someone from Georgia doesn't mind driving over to Florida to pick it up. Or someone from Myrtle Beach, you know, doesn't mind people in the next state do not mind coming over. No matter where you are, chances are you're going to lose business because you're not going to show up in all of search. So you're going to cut yourself short by choosing local pickup. So just choose um, freight shipping, like on the couch that I sold, I put, um, we'll ship anywhere in the world, buyer makes arrangement for shipping. And I will go into another webinar another day about shipping, but this is what I suggest. Then the next area, this is where you review what you, your listing. So we've got, we put in our PayPal email address, there's mine, in case anybody wants to send me money. And then below that, you're going to put in the zip code of where your item is located and the handling time. Now, good handling time is one business day. Now, even myself, when I'm shopping on eBay, if somebody has, you know, shipping's going to be delayed by five or six days, 
I probably won't shop with them because I want my item quicker. So one business day means um, you're going to ship it within 24 hours after they pay. So make sure that you are available to do that if you can, you know, if you are going to offer one business day. So this also means business hours and business days. So if you sell it at 3 o'clock on Friday, technically you don't have to have that shipped until before 3 o'clock on Monday. And then the next one is returns. You're also going to lose money if you do not accept returns. Very rarely have I had a return. But if I didn't have it in there, it, makes, it, may, it would make me look shady. And that's my opinion. But I feel that way when I go to buy something on eBay and it's like, oh, why don't they accept returns? What's the problem? So it makes me um, have doubt about the seller. So you can offer a restocking fee. So what I do is I'll put buyer pays return shipping plus a 20% restocking fee. And in my opinion, by having it worded that way, it scares off um, the, you know, the girl who may want to wear the dress to prom or the weekend and then return it on Wednesday and because now there's a restocking fee in there. So I feel that it, it kind of, um, and eBay will let you do up to 20% as of this moment. So the last thing, now this is it. So we've gone through our complete listing. No matter what style we use, we had our title or our category, our title. Is it new or used? The photos, the description box, the shipping area. This is it. And then now here we are at the bottom, and we can either preview it, we can save it for later, or we can list it. Now, those of you that um, are like me and you have, I have a laptop and I have a mobile phone, what I do is I list everything from my laptop except for the photo. So I'll go through the, I'll set my goal because I'm all about goal setting, and I'll set my goal and say, okay, I'm going to list five items before lunch, or I'm going to list ten items before lunch. So I'll start with the title, the description, um, the shipping. I'll do everything but the photos, and I'll click on save for later. And then I'll go to the next one, do everything but the photos, and save for later, and so on. The next one, everything but the photos, save for later. Then I go into my photo area, a.k.a. used to be living room, and I'll go in there and I'll get out my mobile phone, and I'll pull up the eBay app, and I'll click on sell. And when I click on sell, there's all my drafts of all of these listings that I've already started that we're waiting for save for later. So I pull up the first one and all I do is add photos and then have click on list it and it goes live. Pull up the next one, take my pictures, add the photos, boom, goes live. I can get a lot of listings done really fast using that system. So here's the good news. The very, very good news that I love sharing with people is it won't blow up. So this is the good news. This is how simple it is to list an item on eBay. And it won't blow up on you. You can save it for later. There's no pressure here. You can actually delete it. So if you didn't like the way that went, you can list that Starbucks mug and then say, you know what, I'm going to... I'm not going to have it go live. It's not, it's not in stone. It's not going to go live until you push that button to make it go live. And then even then you have to review it before you continue. So we're going to have time. There's time for you to play with it. You can um, do it over again. Practice. Makes perfect. List it. Follow the, the easy steps that I showed you. And then do it over again. But the main thing is to practice and have fun with it. It won't blow up. So a few final words and helpful tips. I want to recommend you go shopping. <laughs> so. The thing is, when you go shopping on eBay, you will be able to pick up ideas for being a better seller yourself. 
by seeing it firsthand how these people ship items to you and how it works. You can buy absolutely everything on everything on eBay. My husband even buys chlorine tablets for our swimming pool. Okay, you could buy um, lip balm. I I have a bit of a lip balm addiction, so and I send lip balm to my kids. You can buy lip balm, send it to everybody in your family. I you can find it on eBay many times. A dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine, free shipping. Um, you can buy pet toys on eBay. I'm sure you have a pet that you could just do a search. I also bought um, flea, flea stuff for my cat on eBay. If you need lotion, sunscreen, any type of lotion, everyday stuff you could find on eBay. You can buy coffee cups, coffee grounds, coffee, um, every type of coffee brand probably on the planet. You can find on eBay. Ethiopian coffee I've seen on eBay. You can buy your shipping scale on eBay. Now, I ran across this one. It's $16.99. I don't know if it's still on sale, but that's a good deal for a 66-pound scale. <laughs> so you, all you do is go to the search bar and type in Saga, S-A-G-A, Postal Scale 66LB, and see what they're selling for. This guy had free shipping, and he sold 4,539 of them. Also, you can find poly bags. I like to ship anything under a pound in my poly bag. So I buy poly bags in all shapes and sizes. You can do all kinds of searches for poly bags. And also, there's a way at the top you can adjust to show only auction or buy it now. So. Uh, many times if I need something really fast, I don't want to wait for an auction, I'm just going to switch it to buy it now, and then I'm going to try to buy it now, and then adjust my sort bar at the right to lowest price first. So do some shopping, and pay attention to how did they ship it to you, how long did it take, and learn from what you liked and what you didn't like, so that you can be a better seller. So eBay in a snapshot, over 110 million items are available worldwide, over 90 million active users worldwide, approximately 7 million items are added every day, a pair of shoes sells every 8 seconds, a motor part or accessory sells every second, so I want to get into motors, a cell phone sells every 6 seconds, and a car every 90 seconds. It's crazy. So one thing they don't mention is a forklift sells every four hours. So this is where my motto came into play. When I went to eBay headquarters and I took a look around and I saw the, the, the statistics coming in on all of these people selling on eBay and all of this data, it blew my mind. And that's when I realized I'm just a little grain of sand <laughs> on the eBay sea. And I realize there is plenty of eBay for us all to be blessed and prosper. Everyone here can sell. We can all sell the same thing, but we've got to research what we're going to sell, and we can all make money on eBay. I like to use my husband as an example. He's from Belfast, Northern Ireland, came to America, and had a steel coating blacktop business for almost 30 years. So this has been his life. And then when the economy hit, no companies, no, we're getting their big parking lots done, and it all slowed down. So he had to come up with what to do. And, of course, he had a wonderful eBay instructor. <laughs> and so I showed him how to research products. And so he got really, really good at looking stuff up. And so what happened was this local lady had an estate sale. And, again, search your area for estate sales. I'm a treasure hunt seller. I like to sell everything. We both do. So he got on the list, on her newsletter list, and um, she would email whenever there were but the estate sale was coming up, and she would email what she was going to be selling. And so when people do that, you can pull up completed listings, and you can sit there and look up what they have, on the completed listings list, and then you'll know whether to go to the estate sale or not. So in this situation, she had um, camera equipment. So he started looking up all the camera equipment, 
and she actually was taking a silent auction. So she asked um, everybody to place a bid, and he actually bid um, he bid twenty five hundred dollars. And so um, the lady came back, and I don't know what that was from. I just got this weird notice on my phone. I don't know what that was. And so the lady came back, and um, she said that somebody else um, won them, of course, but they couldn't come up with the money. So she said the guy wanted it 4500 He didn't have it. Did you have the 2500 because the next guy didn't have it? And he said yes. So long story short, he gave her 2500 He listed the first camera lens on eBay, and he sold it for 2500 <laughs> And then he did $17,000 in two months with camera equipment that he knew nothing about. This is a guy who would who would type on eBay with two fingers or type on his computer with two fingers. So it just goes to show how far you can get along with um, research and finding your own stuff on eBay. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and um, we'll go ahead and look at questions now. And again, if I answered your question, my goal is for you to be confident enough to start listing that first item. And let's see, start with Shirley. If setting your store on vacation mode, can you still run auctions? Yes, ma'am. So my items are all hidden. Um, let's see if I can, here we go. Okay, there we are, hello. So yes, Shirley, um, when you put when you put your store on vacation and you have auctions, your auctions all still run and they still show up. And then um, your your buy it now items, your store items are all hidden from the public. So it works out really good. All right. So yes, that's it. Okay. Well, I'm glad that everybody was able to um, be here for today's presentation. So you can watch for that follow-up email. And I will um, thank you. So I will uh, get that sent out as soon as the, the video processes, and then everybody will get a copy. And if you have any questions, just shoot me an email, and I, I will put you on my list when the next um, email or when the next webinar is coming up. I'm actually doing this one um, two more times. So if you know anybody that's interested, please send them a link to um, sign up. And perfect. All right. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, everybody, so much for coming. Paul, um, Harry, Susie, Jane. Hi, Jane. <laughs> um, hope to see you guys at the, the local people at the meetup. We're meeting at breakfast this week. So we're going to talk about eBay over breakfast. I can't wait. So I hope to see some of you there. So until next time. I'm Dana Crawford. Thank you very much for joining me. Awesome. Have a great eBay selling day. Bye. Okay, now how do I shut this off? Okay, exit.